You have to live a fulfilled life, even if you make less. Because would you rather have your children be happy or successful? Today we're going to be talking about if you hate your job, why it's a complete waste of your life, and why you should quit it. So uh, this is going to be based off of my number one video that I've ever put out on the internet, my most viral video I've ever put out. It's called Why You Should Quit Your Job. And uh, it's at about 95, 96 million views right now. I put it out almost two years ago. And I've gotten a lot of love for the video and I've gotten a lot of hate for the video. I've gotten a lot of love for people that I think understand the video. I've got a lot of hate from people I don't think understand it. So I wanna dive deeper into the subject. And instead of putting out a, a three and a half minute video, I wanna dive deeper into it and actually talk about why I think you should quit your job if you hate it. So uh, we spend the majority of our lives, our waking hours at a job. That's a fact. The majority of the time that we spend awake, we do nothing else more than work. So that's the first thing that I want to set. We spend more time working than doing anything else that we do. And here's the sad fact. 85% of people in the United States don't enjoy what they do. This is a recent Gallup poll. 85% of people do not enjoy what they do in America. And in China and Japan, that number is 94%. So between 85 to 94% of people don't love what they do, but they spend the majority of their life doing it. So if you're at a job that you hate, it is a complete, absolute waste of your life. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. Most people do that even though they hate doing it and they think to themselves, all right, well, you know what? I'm just going to work until I get to 65 and then I can finally retire. That's what people think. I'm going to just put my head down. I'm going to work. It's okay if I hate my job. I'm going to do it so that I can eventually get to my retirement age and then I can live the life I've always wanted to live. But let's be real. Once you get to 65, you don't have as much energy. You don't have as much time. You don't have as much vibrancy for life in most cases as you would if you were in your 20s, 30s, 40s going out and traveling and living the job that you want and doing the, everything that you want to in your life. Uh, that's just a fact. But here's the crazy thing. The majority of people get to 65 and they're not able to retire because they were working a job that they hated. They didn't save enough money and now they can't retire. So now they got to work till 70, 72 years old. And let's just say, for instance, if you look at the average person gets their first real job around the age of 20 to 22 years old, and then they have, you know, until let's just say they do get to retire at 65. Well, then that means if they're lucky, they'll get to 80 years old. Only about 80% of people, actually 65% of people live to 80 years old. So that means 15 years. So they spend from 20 to 65, that's 45 years working a job that they probably don't enjoy so that they can have 65 to 80 years old, which is a smaller, only 15 years or 65 to 80, I guess you could say is actually fit. Yeah. 15 years. They spend that time living it up, enjoying life. That's what they think, right? But then they don't have the money that they want to. If they do have the money they want to, they don't have as much energy as they want to. And so that's why I think that you should quit your job if you dread Mondays. Now, let me preface this a little bit. Don't quit and put yourself in cr crazy, terrible financial strain. I don't want you to do that. But what I do want you to do is start to actually think about what it is that you want to do. I understand that you might not be able to leave your job today, but if you know that you hate your job and you're not listening to this podcast, now you have to realize you don't have to know exactly what you want to do right now. But if you're not in constant search and make that the mission to do what you want to do, then it's an issue. You need to start thinking about what is it that I want to do? What is it that makes me feel alive? What is it that I absolutely love? And some of you, I get it. You have children, you have a mortgage, you have a family, you have bills to pay. I understand. I hear you. But you have to realize this. You're raising your children. They're watching everything that you do. They're going to become a lot like you. I don't know if you're, if you're like me, but I look at some of the things I do and I'm like, damn, that was basically my mom. Like I am literally a lot of, in a lot of aspects, I do a lot of things exactly the same. So in the same case, if you're working a job that you hate just to provide for your family, your children are going to grow up and do what? The same thing that you've done. And if they're doing the same thing that you've done, they're going to probably get a job that they hate 
just so they can pay the bills. Because if they see mom or dad working a job that they hate so they can pay the bills, they automatically think that's the way that the world works. Oh, job is just something that you hate. You just have to pay the bills. And so what happens? They grow up and do the exact same thing that you did. Then what happens? They raise their children, your grandchildren to do the exact same thing. And as, uh, as Alan Watts likes to say, it's all wretch and no vomit. Like there's no change. There's no, I'm going to step out and do something completely different. You know, I think that I was lucky enough because my mom was, a, was a, worked on her own. So I saw, she was self-employed. I saw her be self-employed. So for me, it was an easy route to be like, screw it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, I dropped out of school. I was like, I don't want to go to college and get a job that I hate. By the time I was in college, I was making more money than I would have if I had just gone the college route because I was in a sales position. And my mom was actually the one that said, hey, you know, why do you go to school in the first place? I was like, to make money. She goes, what are you already doing? I was like, making money. She goes, so why do you need to be there? She was like the little, I kind of needed her permission to leave school is the way I felt it. And she was kind of that permission. She's like, well, if you don't love it, you don't want to be there, then just go. But so many people, they're raising their children to do the exact same thing. Now, once again, I don't want you to put yourself in financial strain, but I want you to think, if I hate my job right now and it doesn't fulfill me, can I eventually leave to do something that I love? I'm not saying don't have a job and just live on the streets. I'm saying, can you change jobs into doing something that you love? Even if you make less money, isn't that still more fulfilling? Isn't it better to wake up and be excited about what you do versus hate what you do? Think about that for a second. I would be okay making less money, but loving what I do, as long as I wasn't doing something that I hated and wasting my life away at it. Here's what's really interesting though. This is the kind of like the paradox that people don't realize. Whenever you leave your job and you do something that you love, you love it so much that you're willing to work harder at it. And when you work harder at it, you become better and you become better and you become better and you can eventually become world-class at something and charge a premium for whatever your services are. So what's crazy is that you might leave a job that pays you $60,000 a year. In year one of doing what you truly love, you might make 40,000. Then you move up to 42,000. Then you move up to 48,000. You start getting better and better and better because you love what you do. You're willing to work hard at it because it doesn't feel like work and you actually truly want to do it. And then what happens? You get better and you better and better. Seven years down the road, you're making 65,000. Then you're making 70, you're making 80. And in the long run, you make more money doing what you love because you love to do it and you're passionate about it and you don't see it as work, you just see it as something that's a part of you versus working this job that you stayed at for security. Now there's one thing that we do know if you see what's going on in the world right now, what people thought were secure jobs, you know, they went the secure route, the safe route, you know, a lot of things came in, completely stripped them of it and now they're looking for a job even though they were working a job that they hated, now they're looking, oh, that was secure? It's not secure as I thought it was. The most secure job that you can have in the world is being really, really good at what you do so that you're unfireable or number two is to do something where you're your own boss. The most secure job in the world is working for yourself because nobody can fire you. That's the really interesting thing about it. We always think secure is like going the secure route, the traditional route. You go to school, you get a job, you go and you get promoted, you get promoted. No, a company can just get rid of you as soon as they want to and the way that I realize this and the person I think says it the best is Jim Carrey. He was talking about a commencement speech and he mentions his dad. And the thing that he says about his dad is that his dad was an incredible saxophone player. He was the funniest guy that he ever met. And he wanted to be a saxophone player and a comedian, but he had a family. And he had this family and he ended up becoming an accountant instead. And he watched his dad go to a job that he hated every single day. And then his dad, like 15, 20 years later, got fired from that position that he hated. And then they became homeless because he didn't have a backup plan. He became homeless and they lived in their car for a little while. And Jim Carrey says this quote, I learned a lot of things from my dad, but not the least of which is that I can, you can fail at something that you hate so you might as well take a chance at doing something that you love. Let me say that again. He watched his dad get fired from a job that he hated. So we saw that as a failure at doing something that you hated. And so he thought to himself, if you can fail at what you hate doing, I might as well take a chance at something that I love doing. You have to live a fulfilled life, even if you make less. Because would you rather have your children be happy or successful? 
right? So, you know, and here's the thing, it might not even be successful. I might just go to a job and just make 60, $65,000 a year. But for me, for my children, I would rather have them, grow, even if they make less money, I'd rather have them be fulfilled and love the life that they have. And so you got to think, what am I teaching my children? Even if I'm not teaching it to them directly, what are they seeing me do? Because they're going to follow in my footsteps. Once again, I'm not saying quit your job. I'm just saying that if you don't love your job, you need to get out of it at some point in time. It's okay for right now to be working a job that you don't love because you're now waking up to the fact that maybe you don't love it, but it's not okay to be in constant pursuit of that which is something that you love. It's, not, it's, it's fine to work a job for a little while. It's not fine to work there forever if you hate it. You know, maybe you have to, you, know, you don't have to get a bigger house or a newer car all of the time or, or feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses or have that really special job title so that you think people respect you. No, what it is about is not getting stuck in the rat race, not feeling like you have to keep up with the Joneses and buy things that you, it's like the, the, uh, the quote, we buy things, we, we work jobs that we hate to buy things uh, that we don't want to impress people that we don't like. Right? It's like, why don't we just do what we want to do? Instead of having to buy that new car, you know, maybe what we do is we say, screw it, I'll save that money. And what I'll do is I'll work a job that I love, something that makes me feel fulfilled inside. Because the best that we know, guys, we only get one life. Maybe there's reincarnation, maybe there's not. I'm not smart enough to know. I've never died to be on the other side. Uh, not that I know of. And so you have to realize, to the best of our knowledge, we get one of these things. And if you're not living a fully 100% fulfilled life and you hate what you do, it's a waste. And I don't know about you, but my biggest fear is getting to the end of my life and wishing that I could have done something more, wishing that I could have done something that I love, wishing that I could have brought more to the world, more joy to the people around me, to my community, to my family, to children, everyone else that's around me. You have to realize we're caught up in a society where you're taught you need to go the safe route, right? We wake up at what, three, four, five years old and we're like, all right, we got to go to school. We go to school. We're stuck inside of a box. We stay inside of that box for the longest time. What happens? They say, oh, you're in kindergarten. Make sure you do really good so you can get to first grade and make sure you do really good so you can get to second grade and third and fourth and so on. And you get to high school and they say, make sure you do really good in high school so that you can get into a good college. And then when you're in college, they say, make sure you do really good in college so that you can get a good job. And then when you get into a good job, they say, make sure you do really good so you can get promoted, so you can make more money, so you can get promoted, so you can make more money, so you can get promoted, so you can make more money. And you wake up at 45, 50 years old and you're like, what the hell have I been doing with my life? There's a reason why why there's a phrase called a midlife crisis is because people wake up, wake up and go, what the hell am I doing with my life? Whose life am I living? Is this what I wanted to do? And then what happens? It's a crisis because they feel stuck. They don't know how to get out of it because the box that they were raised in is now the box that they feel stuck in into now try to reprogram yourself to leave a job, to think completely different, to get out of your comfort zone is scary as hell. And I get it. I used to have a client that would call them the golden pellets. Every two weeks, he'd get those golden rat pellets. Those golden rat pellets are his paycheck. Those are what keep him. They're golden, but they're rat pellets. They're poison as well. And it's what keeps you inside of that loop. It's a reason why they call it the rat race. And some people, most people, will stay inside of that rat race forever. Some people, maybe you, this might be a spark that gets you going, that goes, you know what? Maybe I can't leave right now, but I'm leaving this. There's no way in hell that I'm going to continue down this path. I'm leaving this and I'm going to go ahead and create the life that I want to. It might take me six months. It might take me a year. It might take me two years, but I'm going to leave. I will not stay at a place that I don't love. I will not waste my waking hours doing something that I don't want to do. You weren't born to just pay the bills and die. Take that one in for a second. You we're not born to pay the bills and die. You were born to thrive. You were born to live this life with as much joy and passion and love as you possibly can. And if you're going to a job and spending the majority of your hours doing something that you hate, that's going to restrict your joy, your passion for life. You're going to come home and you're not going to be able to, because you're so spent on mentally exhausted from being at work, when you come home and interact with your kids, you're not going to have the energy and the joy and the love and the passion. And guess what? They're not going to get all of you. But when you come home 
from something that you love and you're excited about life. You give more to your children and the people around you. So not only is it your, your actual self that's being affected by the job that you have, it's everyone around you. It's something to consider. And it's with great love and respect that I want to tell you this. We're all going to die. We're all going to end up as dust. But you are in charge of what you do with your waking hours. If you don't love what you do, find some way to leave and do something that you love and be able to get paid doing that thing that you love. Even if you make less money, even though here's a secret, like I said, in the long run, you will eventually make more money. Don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. Don't worry about the bigger house. Don't worry about being judged. Worry about living the life that you want, doing something that you love with the people that you love so that you can deliver and be the best human, the best father, the best brother, sister, mother, father, cousin, everything that you can be for the people around you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. How do you get out of your head during this pandemic? What are the top three books that you would recommend? Do you believe in aliens is the next question. You want me to be honest with you?